One year ago, I planted 12 fruit trees with the goal of creating a backyard orchard that will eventually give me year-round harvests of delicious tree-ripened fruit. Everything from peaches, apples and persimmons, to fig and even jujube. And today, in this video, I'll show you everything that I'm doing to prune and manage these trees during their dormant winter season. My goal today is not only to show you all the steps that I'm taking to prune these trees, but to give you the explanation and examples necessary so that you have the confidence to make these necessary but often intimidating pruning cuts with your young fruit trees. And this will be the third video in this ongoing series following the entire life cycle of my backyard orchard. And there's gonna be many more to come. So if you're growing fruit trees and wanna follow along with my experience, consider subscribing and I'll be sure to show you every step along the way. In my most recent orchard video, I demonstrated the importance of summer pruning fruit trees for size management. And in that video, I also showed the results of all the pruning cuts I made when I planted these trees last February. And I received a lot of great feedback about that part of the video. People just said it was really helpful and reassuring to see the results of all these pruning cuts. So before I start pruning this Spice Z neck to plum, let's travel back to February and then August, so you can see all the cuts I made and the results of all those cuts to get you caught up to where we are today. This thing needs to be pruned. I just got it in the ground a couple days ago. It's a two year old tree. And at this point, it's all the way up to about shoulder height on me, but I wanted scaffold, it's branching to start much lower because I've got my trees pretty close together, just under six feet apart. So I want the branching to start just about knee high. In order to start that branching down there, I'm gonna come way down here. And what I'm looking for is about three to five branches all coming out from different sides of the tree at about a 45 degree angle. What I have are three branches that are slightly steeper than a 45 degree, not really quite as flat as I want. So what I'll do is rather than keep them and keep them long like this, I'll cut them a little bit lower to an outward bud so they continue to create that 45 degree angle. And I like these three, they're coming out on different sides, but I've got two that are coming out this way, one this way, and this back side really has nothing. Now that's okay because through the branching over the next couple of years, it'll fill in that gap. But ideally, I'd have one more scaffold branch coming out this back side. So I've got a couple of buds right here. And if I cut just beyond these buds that are on the back side, that should establish a new branch for me. So rather than cut this tree right here above this scaffold branch and make that the top, I'm gonna to come above a bud on this back side, and that'll be my new scaffold branch. So I mentioned that these are at a slightly steeper angle than that 45 degrees that I really want. And I said that what I will do is cut them to an outward bud to improve that angle. But another option is to take the piece that I cut off and actually make a spacer that I can put between that branch and the main stem. And that will help to force that branch out to create that nice 45 degree angle. I'm gonna cut to this outward facing bud. Got a good one right here. Just above that, this limb, I've got one right there. And right there. All right, and that's it. And it's put on all this growth, almost nine feet of growth this summer. So now it's time to check this growth, bring it back down to size. I'll probably cut off about three quarters of this growth and bring it back down to outward facing buds, check the vigor and get it ready for fall. That's it. So it's now the first week in February and it's time for winter pruning, which is all about the detail work. With more mature fruit trees, my main focus right now would be pruning for fruit production. But with these young trees in this first few years, my main focus is still establishing and maintaining a healthy structure for the trees that's capable of producing and supporting healthy crops well into the future. Most of my trees here in this section of my yard are stone fruits, either peaches, nectarines, plums, apricots, or a hybrid of those like this Spice Z Nectar Plum. 
So this will be a good example of how I'm pruning most of these trees and I'll go through my entire process with this one tree right here. Then I'll take you around the yard to some of my other trees to show you how you can adapt this simple process to any other pruning scenario. And it all starts with sharp, clean pruners. So I put a nice edge on these and I clean them with isopropyl alcohol and I clean them between every single tree because I do not wanna spread any disease from one tree to another. And even if a tree looks like it doesn't have a disease, it's always a safe bet to clean them just in case. My first pruning cuts for this tree will be to remove any dead or diseased wood. And that's an important step anytime you're pruning any plant. But in winter, when these plants are dormant, and I know this one's not completely dormant, but that's just a characteristic of these nectoplums here in Central California, they don't wanna lose all of their leaves. But anyway, it can be tough sometimes to tell which branches are alive and which ones are dead. So a simple trick to determine if you think a branch is dead is to just gently scratch the bark. And if it's green underneath, it's still alive. But if it's brown and brittle, it's dead. So if I find any dead wood like that, I wanna come just beyond an outward facing bud and cut it where the branch is still alive so it'll heal over. Next, I wanna focus on establishing and maintaining the general shape and structure of this tree. And with stone fruits like this, what I'm aiming for is an open center or open crown tree, sort of like a wine glass shape. So when I first planted this tree and I headed it off, I created these scaffold branches going out all in opposite directions. There's four of them here, but I want anywhere between three and five branches. And I removed everything in the center. And some of that has grown in since then. So right now what I'll first do is clean up any of the branches that are growing in toward the center. Now I'll remove any branches that are crowding, crossing, or just going in the wrong direction. And I'll be making two different types of cuts as I do this. I'll be making heading cuts and thinning cuts. A heading cut is when I take a branch and I cut it mid branch, just beyond an outward facing bud. I wanna choose an outward facing bud because I want outward facing branches. And that top bud at the end of this limb will have what's called apical dominance. So it will get the most energy from this plant and that will create a new branch toward that bud. So I want it outward facing because if I choose an inward facing bud, I'll get an inward facing branch, which I don't want. And then the other type of cut is a thinning cut. Thinning cut removes this branch entirely at the base or at the collar of that branch and that will heal over, no branch there. Right here is a perfect example to show the results of a thinning cut and a heading cut that I made to this tree during summer pruning. So the limb was going vertical this way with a small branch going out this way. I made this thinning cut just beyond this small branch to direct the energy outward. Then I tip pruned this small branch that at the time only had a small bud right here and that directed the energy to this bud to promote it to create an outward facing branch. Now. I've got this small spindly branch and I don't want the energy going out further this way up top. I wanna to bring it back down. So I'll find another outward facing bud right here and I'll cut it just beyond that outward facing bud. That's a heading cut and that will promote another branch coming outward from there. As I make my way around the tree, I'll make thinning cuts to completely remove branches that I don't want like these low branches down here and I'll cut them right at the branch collar so they can heal over. And I'll remove crowding and crossing branches like this one that's way too close to this other limb. Then once the lower section of the tree is cleaned up, I'll remove any crowding or crossing branches in the upper section. And I'll come around the entire perimeter of the tree and tip prune each of the branches to create these heading cuts that will continue to promote this outward facing growth. And for this tree, that's it. Let's move on to another one. Now here's another tree that I planted and pruned the same day that I planted that spice Z nectoplum. This is a fig tree. It's a tiger stripe fig tree, which is one of my favorite varieties, also known as a panache fig. One of the cool things about this tree is it was actually a rooted cutting from a fig tree at my original urban farmstead. So 
I took a cutting from one of the branches when I pruned that tree. I put it in some soil, propagated that cutting, and created a new fig tree. I did that with dozens of cuttings, and I have a full video showing that really simple process, and it works really well, so I'll add a link to that video here if you're interested in propagating fig trees. But for now, let's talk about how I'm gonna prune this this year. So when I planted this tree one year ago, I made a really low heading cut way down here, and that promoted three branches coming out in all different directions, which is the perfect shape for what I wanted from this fig tree. I wanted an open centered, open crown tree, just like the rest of my trees. Although with fig trees, you can pretty much prune them however you want. You can do an espalier, you could do a standard tree with just one center trunk and then it can branch out like a tree. You can have a small bush, really anything that you want for fig trees. But for me, I wanted this open crown tree. So I topped it here have these upward, outward branches. And now the next thing I wanna do is come in just around probably about two feet high. I'm gonna find outward buds and I'll cut just beyond that outward facing bud. This bud will create a new branch. I'll do the same thing with both of these limbs. So right here, I'll make a cut to promote this bud to create a new branch this way. And then back here, I'll make another cut to promote a branch in this direction. Okay, now I got enough wood to propagate a couple dozen more fig trees. And those pruning cuts should be enough to create this open centered, open crown fig tree that I'm aiming for. But if I did want these limbs to reach outward more, I could either cut them lower to promote more outward growth, or I could take a bamboo stake and tie the limbs to it to pull them further out if that's what I wanted. But I don't think it's gonna be necessary with this fig tree. However, I have another fig tree on the other side of my pathway that I will be staking to create the shape and direction that I want for its limbs. So let's go look at that. This is my blackjack fig tree. And when I pruned it last year, I did a heading cut right here to promote all this outward growth. And it's got a lot of nice outward growth, but the outward growth is really flat. And as you can see, it's starting to kind of go upward at the tip of it and it actually has these little figs, but it put these figs on in fall and they definitely were not gonna ripen up. Anyway, right now I have one, two, three, four, five scaffold branches and they are all coming out in different directions except for this one. This lower limb is pretty much in line with this branch right here. So I'll cut this one off right there and I'll keep these four branches. But still the angles of these, especially this one in front, are not ideal. They're way too flat. So I'll take these bamboo stakes, just these cut pieces of bamboo that one of my neighbors was giving out because bamboo trees are very aggressive and they give you a lot of these stakes. So got that one there. Scaffold staking like this is not a common practice and it's not something that I do with my trees very often but it does work well in some situations, so I wanted to be sure to include this example in this video. Now with all four limbs going in my desired direction, I'm still gonna tip prune each of these with a heading cut to an outward facing bud. I know this is a fig, not a bud, but there's a bud right underneath that thing, and that's gonna promote a branch going out that way. Right here, I've got another bud, print above that, branch going out that way, this one, just a little bit right there. And on this side, I'll prune right there, remove that fig and a branch going out that way. So now I've got these four scaffold branches all going in the direction that I created with these bamboo stakes and they're tip pruned to continue that outward growth going out that way. So this fig tree is done until midsummer. This is my O. Henry peach, and when I planted it last February, it was taller than it is right now, but it didn't have the right shape for a peach tree. I want that open center, and it had a center leader going in it. So when I planted it, I cut it off way down here at about 18 inches. Now I've got all my branches here. This will grow out, probably put on about three feet of vegetative growth this summer. I'll come back and prune it again. And what that did was encourage these small branches and buds to branch out and create these outward facing scaffold branches. And then last summer, it put on a bunch of growth. So in late summer in August, I took that big vigorous growth out of it with some big pruning cuts to bring it back down to size. 
Now it's winter time and it's time for those fine tuning cuts. So I'll bring you in close so you can see the structure of this tree. My goal is to have between three and five scaffold branches. And initially that's what I had. One, two, three, four, five. But this one split and this one split. So now I have seven and it's just way too crowded in here. As you can see, these two are really close at angle and they're already starting to cross right here. So I'm gonna start by just removing this one that's overcrowding. And this looks pretty good. I might lose this branch soon, but for now I'll keep it on there. As you can see, this branch is way too flat. It actually goes down a little bit. So I'll remove that. Clean up the base of this tree, removing any little sticks. Another flat branch back here, that'll go. And then I'll just kind of clean up the center, any of these smaller spindly branches that aren't doing us any favors. Some of these are real vertical. Any vertical branches are gonna get way too much energy and just have vegetative growth. So even though they're pretty small sticks at this point, I wanna remove anything that's too upward facing. This one's upward and inward. I don't really have any big size management cuts to make because I made all those big pruning cuts in summer. But if you didn't do your summer pruning, now would be the time to take the size down. You can see where I made all these cuts last summer at the tips of each of these branches, either at an outward facing branch or an outward facing bud, maintaining the open crown and directing the energy outward. So now all I need to do is come around and tip prune or do heading cuts at other outward facing buds. And that will continue to drive the energy out from the center, maintaining that open crown and directing the energy out to either a single branch or a forked branch, depending on what I want. That's it for year two winter pruning of this O. Henry peach tree. I will come back in midsummer, hopefully around July this year for another big size management pruning. Let's move on to another tree. This is my pink lady apple. It's a delicious, low chill, self fruitful variety. So it'll do well here in my zone and it doesn't need another apple tree and I only have one. And there's some conflicting information about that, but I do have a friend who has just one pink lady apple and it gets plenty of fruit. So hopefully I'm fine with just this one. With its low chill though, it doesn't go fully dormant. We're well into winter now and it still has a lot of leaves on these branches which is fine unless you wanna do a dormant fungicide spray, in which case you would have to manually defoliate all of these branches before you spray it, which isn't that much work with a small tree, but as it gets larger, it can be more difficult. For me today, because I'm gonna be pruning this, pretty much tip pruning all of these branches, I'm gonna be cutting off those leaves anyway, and I'm not actually spraying this tree this year because I don't have any sign of fungus yet. Cross our fingers, it doesn't come. So. What I'm going for with this tree, because apples can be pruned either to a center leader, a modified center leader, or an open crown, I'm going for a modified center leader. So when I pruned this in late summer, I made a lot of pruning cuts way down here pretty low. And since then, I've gotten a lot of new growth on this tree, anywhere from 12 to 24 inches in some places. So I just wanna find all that new growth and I'll take it back about two thirds to outward facing buds and clean up anything here in the center, except for this center leader because I'm doing a modified center leader. So I've got one, two, three, four, five outward scaffold branches and one center leader. So I'll clean up these outward scaffold branches anything that's crossing or growing too vertically. And then I'll prune each of them to these outward facing buds. And that's it. This is my Flavor Delight Aprium. It's an apricot plum cross, and it's put on a lot of nice, good fruiting wood after my summer pruning. So I'll make my cut way down here. 
So I tip pruned it out here at all of the tips of these scaffold branches, just over uh, navel height on me. And that continued the energy going outward, keeping the center open. There is some center growth that has come in since then, more fruiting wood. It's in directions that I don't want. So I'll start by just kind of clearing some of this stuff out. And I'll show you what I mean by fruiting wood on these stone fruits, whether they're peaches, nectarines, apricots or apriums like this, they're gonna be these red burgundy branches. And some of them will have little flower buds on them as well. Here's one that actually has a couple of little flower buds on it. Not only was this growing in an undesirable direction toward the center of the tree, but I'm also not focused on fruit production right now. I just wanna build and maintain the structure of this tree. So I'll continue to clean up any little branches growing in here toward the center. And I also feel like this branch scaffold is a little bit more crowded than I would like it to be. There's five branches, which is the maximum, and two of these are kind of going in the same direction. So I'm gonna remove this one right here. So I'll cut it all the way back here, just past the collar. And now I've got a lot better spacing in here. I'm not too worried about the overcrowding that was going on before. And there is quite a bit of new growth on these branches since I pruned it back in summer. So I wanna take them back down a little bit. This one here, I'm gonna bring back to this V and encourage both of these branches to grow out. I'll tip prune them at outward buds. This is my Eva's Pride Peach. It's an early peach variety. And as you can see, all these limbs are loaded down with these little pink blossoms right now that are just about to open up. And I'm not gonna be pruning this at all right now because it doesn't have anything to prune off. If you saw my summer pruning video about this tree, it contracted some type of disease which stunted its growth and actually killed off some of the branches. So rather than doing any pruning, what I did was once the leaves fell off in fall, I staked these branches at good angles with these bamboo stakes and I sprayed the entire tree down with Liquicop, which is a dormant fungicide spray that you wanna spray two to three times during the dormant season. And I won't go into details on how I'm using this product here, but I do have a full video showing how I use Liquicop to control peach leaf curl in my more mature peach trees. So I'll add a link to that video here if you're interested. But that's all I'm doing with this peach tree during this dormant season. I won't be pruning this jujube or either of my persimmon trees today because they haven't really put on any significant growth since I pruned them last summer. So in addition to the pruning I did today and the dormant sprays that I'll be doing soon, there isn't really any other winter maintenance for these trees, but I will be coming back in spring to fertilize all these trees with an organic fruit tree fertilizer that I'll list in the video description. And I'll do that as soon as they start to wake up from their winter dormancy, once they start to leaf out and put on flowers and lots of new leaves. Then I'll come back in late spring and I'll thin the first fruit from these trees when it's about grape size. And I'll thin most of that fruit because I want these trees to focus their energy on establishing a healthy structure, not growing fruit yet. But I'll probably leave some of the fruit on and I look forward to tasting all of these different varieties, hopefully this summer. And then after that, I'll be doing another big summer size management pruning. So if you wanna see those videos and if you wanna follow along with the life cycle of this orchard to see how it develops, consider subscribing. I'll also have a lot of other upcoming videos showing how I'm creating this new urban farmstead. If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you have any questions at all about these trees, about my garden or about your garden, ask them in the comments below. Happy gardening, everyone.